Do you know God? I didn't ask you if you know about God. I asked you if you knew God. And by that I mean, do you have a personal relationship with Him? You see, being a Christian is not just following a creed. It's not just believing that Jesus was a historical figure. It's believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died on a cross, rose again from the dead, and is alive and can live inside of you. You see, that same Jesus that went to that cross and died for our sin stands at the door of your life right now. And he says, if you'll hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. From the day you were born, you've been on a quest. There's a hole in your heart. And nothing in this world can fill. No material thing, no relationship, no experience. Not even being a religious person or a moral person is going to fill that void in you. You see, you were created to know God, but here's the problem. You're separated from God by this big old wall called sin. There's nothing you can do to scale it. You can't climb over it or go under it or go around it. Sin is there. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But here's the good news. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross. Now, why is that important? Because, you see, He died for our sin. What does that mean? I sinned against God. I broke God's commandments. Now, God is satisfying His righteous demands through Christ. Let me illustrate. Sort of like you're in a court of law. And the judge finds you guilty for the crimes you've committed. And then it would be as though that same judge took off his robes and came down from the bench and paid the price for your crime. That's what God did at the cross of Calvary. He said, hey, here are the commandments. You've broken them. But I'm going to send my son to pay the price for your sin so you can be forgiven. Jesus came to pay a debt he did not owe because you owed a debt you could not pay. He died for you. Here's what you need to do if you want to know him. You need to repent of your sin. The word repent means to turn away from it. It's sort of like hanging a U-turn in in the road of life. You know, you've been going away from God. It's time to go to God now. The Bible says God has commanded people everywhere to repent. Number two, you need to receive Christ into your life as your Savior and Lord. You need to say, Lord, come in and, and change me and forgive me and transform me. And He'll do that for you right now. Now, here's my question. Would you like Jesus Christ to come into your heart at this very moment? You say, oh man, yeah, but I can't pray, you know, with a computer. You're not praying with a computer. (laughs) You're talking to God. And God is with you where you are at this very moment, just waiting to come into your life. And if you would just pause and pray and mean this prayer from the bottom of your heart, I'm telling you on the authority of the Bible that Jesus Christ himself will come and live inside of you and forgive you of every sin you have ever committed. If you would like to be forgiven of your sin, if you would like Christ to come into your life, if you would like to go to heaven when you die, if you would like to know God, pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe that you died on the cross for me. I turn now from that sin and receive you as my Savior and my Lord and my God and my friend. And I choose to follow you from this moment forward. Thank you for calling me and accepting me and forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Did you pray that with me? Did you feel anything? Maybe you felt a warmth, a a release of a burden. Maybe you didn't feel anything. Listen, when I prayed that prayer for the first time, I didn't feel a thing. But guess what? Christ came into my life. And if you just prayed that prayer in a minute, he's coming to your life as well. The Bible says, for as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. And I would like to be the first person to say, welcome to the family of God. Or for some of you prodigal sons or daughters out there, welcome back to the family of God. God bless you. You've made the right decision, the decision to follow Jesus Christ.